All this area in Yinano, a friend of a simple heritage village. In Kano, not a ha, not yet as a simple. In fact, now the central region, the Yahanis, the sea wall. As the Ashanti, Ashanti is defeated in the French side. Now we almost started attacking the Adanseno. As they moved down, he himself won by the two Missionano. And we also moved down a little, and then moved down to the other side of the, uh, you know, and when they eventually conquered up to that side, you know, that we had already moved here. And uh, this was, uh, this has been our permanent place. And we stayed here till the first uh, road from Kumasi to Cape Coast was built in 1938-39. Now, the Yankwa Fono started say, we will move towards who says, yeah, yeah, new road, if you are. Now, OBI has walk up. Walk roadside. And he has started to say, move towards the roadside. And after a number of years, you know, this place became almost like a, a haunted house, a haunted place. Very few people remained here. And, you know, eventually agreed, said so we should all move to the other side. And we left this place. Luckily for us, Ubi and say, apart from farms, sir, Hawahano, Ubi and say, in your manioma, Hawahano, Kakrebina, with time, in Sioni, in Adiano, Aman, Ekofo, Aseno. And this is the old town of Asim Praso. Siseno, Yayano, Asim Praso Heritage Village, Adia, Yena Nano. They will come and bring other friends and uh, relations to come and see what is here. Now, Ahano has a number, this place has a number of um, attractions. The first, as everybody knows, is the uh, slave trade route, the slave route. But even before I get to that stage, you know, all the people who were coming from the north, from Tamale, from Kumase, Techiman, all those people who wanted to go and buy fish or salt, in the south, Cape Coast area, they all had to pass through here. Right. There was no, as I said, there was no transport, any other transport apart from passing through here. And you were ferried in uh, canoes by people to get you. And then all those who came to settle on the lower parts of us, they also had to be ferried. So this has been a long, has a long history of people who are crossing to the south and people who are crossing to the north. So it was natural that during the slave trade, the people, the slaves from the north, from Salaga, from the Tamale area, through to Kumase and all the rest that they all had to pass through here. So this place 
became a place for crossing of the river Pra to go to Asim Anso and then to places like Elmina Castle, Cape Coast Castle for later to be shipped across the oceans to the New World. The Americas, some to the uh, Caribbean and other islands. So this, where you are standing, is part. The crossing place is just around here. We'll, we'll go there from, from here. The, this is part of the, what we call the uh, slave trade route. From there, they were brought uh, to rest in here. We have a, a big mango tree and some others. And it's, the, the, after the rest, for a day or two, they, were, they, they continued on, on foot to the other parts, through Asampanaye and Akonfude and the rest to Asemansu. So all that is part of the trade route to Mansu and then because people had to walk, there was no cars in those days. The Ashanti Wars of Sagranti War, Saganet Muse, whom we couldn't pronounce and we call Sagranti. <laughs> so the Sagranti War and then the later years of uh, the just about 1800, 1801, 1802, the Yasantua War. The, at that time, the British had taken over from the Dutch in Elmina, so they had both Cape Coast and Elmina, and they had become the bosses of Ghana. And they had Gold Coast Colony, and Gold Coast Colony ended at this river. So this was the end of the Gold Coast Colony. So anytime they wanted to cross the British, which is outside of the slave route, outside of the slave trade, that they wanted to cross to the Asantes, either to fight or to do something, they had to pass through here. Of course, the white men were carried <laughs> by our people hmm. <laughs> all through, whilst our own people were walking behind <laughs> them. So this became the end of the Gold Coast. So anytime, like as I said, those two wars, the uh, Sagranti War and the Yasanti War, they had to pass through here. Yeah. During the First war, the first day, the first war, that is the Sagranti War, they couldn't conquer the Ashanti. Their major thing was to let Ashanti come under uh, Gold Coast. They couldn't. They also wanted the Golden Stool. They couldn't. So they were happy that at least they got Nana Prempe, the first of the Ashantis. They captured him and shaped him. When they got here, he had to spend a night here in Vizia Castle, which is in ruins now. And we, we've asked some of our people in England to look at Q. Uh, the Q, uh, Q Center, which is a place where they will put the old Gold Coast, uh, Canada, uh, Nigeria, and etc. history to look for how this place was so that we can use the same material to, to, to rebuild. So far, we haven't got that. So, the pass through here, Nana Prempe, the first, had to spend two day, two nights here before he was shipped 
to Elmina, okay, to the Elmina Castle, and from there to the Seychelles. Then the new governor came and he said, well, I still want that golden stone. Hmm. So they ordered uh, a war, agreed with the Britain, with the British uh, at that time, uh, a king there. Uh, and they decided to go and to go back to Ashanti and collect the stool. So when they got here, they knew they couldn't alone uh, fight the Ashantis. So they had to, don't forget at that time, we were all on the Gold Coast, uh, under the British. They had to order, British had to order uh, people from Nigeria, fighters from Sierra Leone, there was a third one, uh, to come and help in the fight. So you can see where the vehicle is parked on the other side towards this one. You can see they built little, little huts, huts for the uh, Nigerians, for the Sierra Leoneans, and uh, others to stay in. When they were ready, they crossed the river, went to Kumase, and couldn't get the, the golden stool. So they had to take Yasantua also. Mm -hmm. Because it was Yasantua who was leading, the men couldn't, they didn't know what to do. So Yasantua took it over. And that's why some of you women are very important in, in getting decisions taken. So she led the group and told them that they shouldn't mind them, whatever they say. But whatever happened, they eventually didn't get the golden stool. So they took the Yasantua herself, crossed to Praso, to the castle here, also spent about two nights before she was also shipped to Elmina Castle and later sent to Seychelles to go and join the king there. Unfortunately, she died and only the king later on uh, was brought back to, to Ashanti. But as part of the, uh, so these are the Ashanti wars that everybody in Ghana should know the role of Praso in these wars. Most of the British people who died were brought here and buried. They, they also have their own grave there. And sometimes it's very annoying, especially for those who come for the same grave. They see the mass grave of the black people, nothing than the big this thing with so many people buried in one place. And yet you go to their British place and they have individual, <laughs> individual burial places with cement and uh, not even cement, uh, marble. marble. <laughs> so, so they get very angry. So these days we don't even take the those who come for the slave days. We don't take them to the British place unless somebody requests. But is there for Ghanaians, everybody in Ghana, to know the difference and etc. So that is the second part, the Anglo Ashanti Wars. The second, the third part, which is also related to the Anglo Ashanti Wars. It's that of the, what today we call the Boy Scouts and the Girl Guides. When they went to, Brit, uh, to Kumasi, they went with one man as their secretary. And he is, uh, what do you call him? Bedu, Bedin Power. I'm not sure some of you are part of the Girl Guides. <coughs> no, 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 not at all. Yes. <coughs> the Boy Scouts history started from here, in this castle, here at a person. Now it's a worldwide organization, Boy Scouts and Girl Guides. The, whilst the, he was a secretary writing all that was going on, 
between the British and the Asantis up to the point where they couldn't get their golden stool and they took uh, Asan to her. So when they came here, he didn't go with them. He didn't continue with them to Almina. They took uh, Yasantua to Almina, but he remained here with two or three people who were helping him to finish his minutes. And he took time to start what today we call the Boy Scouts and the Girl Guides movement. He was writing what a, a Boy Scout should do, what a Girl Guide, no, he didn't do, boys, Girl Guides came later, what a Boy Scout, a boy should do, and etc. Et While they were in Kumasi, and the Asantua got angry at their insistence that they wanted the Virgins to, etc. He told them that they were going to have a final, this, um, a shake hands, and they shouldn't use their right hand. The white man will offer the, white hand, uh, the right hand. They should use their left hand to show that they are angry. <laughs> But of course, the white people didn't understand why they were using the left hand. So when he came here and he, was, he had finished his minutes and he was beginning to write it, he thought it was a good idea to use the left hand to greet. So ask any boy guide or girl guides, they all use left hand. He thought it was a good idea or something novel, something new. <laughs> So that is the history, the beginning, the beginning of the history of uh, Boy Scouts with Baden Power is also here in this uh, castle. So that's why we are also looking for how the building looked like and etc. Mm -hmm. So that we can rebuild it okay. and bring not only Ghanaians but also the worldwide it is, they can even come and have a conference or something here if they know what the history is. Apart from that, we have just behind me here the Nana uh, Pra, Nagosom Pra's shrine, which today in the, today in the days of the, of the Christian uh, community, it's difficult for most people to relate to these uh, uh, mini gods, but people still believe in it. People come from outside their country to come and ask for spiritual assistance. People come from our own country here, Ghana, to come and ask for spiritualism, and they bring in money, sheep, and other other things. So we have somebody here who is looking after the place to make sure that uh, the place is kept is kept quiet and the place is kept uh, clean and whatever needs to be done there, it is done there.